bad in Trinidad. Yo, yeah. Check, check. One, two, three, four. God damn it. Oh, hey. Bad boy. You know how we crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is Birdie. And this is Barney. And this is the Birdie and the Barney show. The Birdie and the Barney show. Hey, it's Birdie and Barney. <laughs> what we're doing with this part, but. Bernie and Buddy. <laughs> you do this, show, this is the Birdie and Barney show. And um, yes, we have with us uh, Jefferson George today from the, uh, well, so many names. You're already un- unified yeah. football coaches now, right? But that's correct. That's correct. <laughs> the president of the Unified Football Coaches Association. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the Gold Cup tournament. Uh, which we are we are in right now we're into the Gold Cup proper, as, as Angus Eve would say, the, the head coach. Um, <laughs> before we get to that, where's all this cooking stuff, Barney? Let me get out of the way now. Well, you know, we, um, we send you to, to, to Taiwan to coach. <laughs> you can't see anything about coaching at all from Barney. <laughs> Barney master in the toaster oven across in Taiwan. Um, um, it's, 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 it's pretty simple, but we are under restrictions here, so we um we still can't go out on the field to do actual in-person training. We've been holding a number of um, online uh, sessions, tactical sessions, online with the team. But um, man must live and man must eat. So yeah. while I've been out here, you know, back home, I've my 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 culinary skills. <laughs> I've been suppressed. I'm out there and I'm expressing myself. So uh, uh, as, as you would have noticed on my Facebook page, I started with a smaller meal, you know, Taiwanese sweet chili infused grilled chicken bread. <laughs> I want the box eh? The box that you buy it and before no, you no, put no, no, no. it. No, 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 no. It have no book in this here, fat, but, but uh, this, this all me. This, this, this is welling up from inside. <laughs> this is what it is, right? So, um, so yeah, so I started indulging, and um, I today after we have finished with our production here, yeah, I will um, I will go and deal with some fish, you know, with some corn and tartar sauce. That's a, <laughs> that's, that's a clarify. That's, that's what I'm about. That's a clarify for all listeners. Bani have a toaster oven, all right? <laughs> it's one step up from a microwave, right? So, <laughs> Let us not speak about the challenges that I may have, you know, with the, with the, with the utensils and, and, and the equipment. Let's talk about the final product. <laughs> the final product, is, it, it's there to see. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not there for you to taste. And I know, I know all I you talk, that is, what is gripe, that is what is really griping you. I wouldn't That's say it. unfortunately. I wouldn't wow. say that. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's too brute. <laughs> Jeff, you look like a man could put on a dread macaroni pie. The full as works. Eater, the, as the, the full works. As an eat, as an eater, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's wife is a is a quite competent cook, right? Yeah, so yeah. He, <laughs> hence, he, hence the reason. Hence the reason. My skills are being suppressed a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, I, I um. Nah, I, I, I could I could do my thing, man. Word, word reaching us from the Southland, Jeff, is that you had no arm um, cooking skills. Uh, that's that's the thing. Nah, that's, 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 that's wrong memos. Yeah, yeah. That's that that is, really that's that is. I just got a I just got a message from one Sean Cooper saying so. I just deep so uh, deep so <laughs> come from. Now we don't play with that. Yeah, we don't play with that at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what we think about the, 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 the product being cooked up across in the state so far. Right, we, we know that um, Angus Eve took over this, this job, and I mean, he had a plug right here on the body and Barney, right? Angus, I'm sorry, right? Um, right, Barney, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We had we had Angus on about what a week before or, or a week or two before he, he got the job, and uh, he spoke very well about the things that um, he would want to see if ever he was, you know, in his seat, and um, yeah, he had a plug for himself. He, 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 he said what he needed to say, and and, and now he's doing what he so, needs to do. So, so, so um, so Lasana, we could um, 
contract you out, I was trying to say, because he was on his show two weeks before, you know. Well, what I'm trying to say, if I want to walk right now, just say so. Tell me what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you want. What does your heart desire? You know? <laughs> We have your hands. Like we, we have your hands. Join us. We have your hands. Night, 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 night. Your hands. Hey, good oh, night, brother. What's happening? I there, I there. Marshall, you you in you in the states by any chance? Looking like you mm -hmm. you, you might have gotten a call up, man. <laughs> no way. I home in my house in Trinidad, brother. <laughs> I can't help in my little work here. <laughs> So, so Jeff, we'll start with you. Um, Gus took over the job in, in um, you know, didn't have much time um, to, to, to put the team together. Well, what do you think so far, Montserrat and, and, and French Guyana? What do you saw? Uh, yeah, well, so far so good, right? Um, for, for, for these games, which were uh, virtual finals, um, the result we got, right? Um, some of the performances um we're encouraging uh, i think what what the coach was trying to do was visible right we had um you know i think players being placed in the, the, the in their best position their strongest positions so to speak and um mm -hmm. so off the bat we had a, a better fit right I, I, I thought the team looked a little bit more uh cohesive they seemed to enjoy playing which is something we haven't seen um, for quite some time, right? Now, again, all of this is viewed with the backdrop of the, the reality, right? I look at some of the comments and you, you really need to ask if persons are aware that a lot of these players, the last time they would have played competitively was um, the last time they had pro league games, right? So the, the in terms of the fitness um, that was clearly lacking. Uh, I think that was always going to be a challenge and something that he would not have had the time to address right before the game. But in terms of the organization, it looked uh, a lot better. Um, the, how they dealt with it, particularly in the um, Montserrat game, in terms of the, the, the ball management and stuff, it, it, those are things that we, we didn't see for some time from a Trinidad and Tobago team. Right. I think the the French Guyana posed a, a little bit different of a challenge, and um, it, it we we rose to the challenge. For me, uh, forty minutes in that game, and we held on for the rest. Yeah. <laughs> so credit <laughs> credit for for basically being able to to hold on. But um, I think that there for me that there there was enough to be encouraged. All right, but again, we have to take that given the actual situation that we face, right? Which is a lot of players who are not just match fit because I've seen people saying they're match fit, but some of the guys um, are, are not doesn't have the proper condition to, to last, um, you know, sixty or seventy minutes. Well, but as you say that, Jeff, right? The the coach made his calls, and I could tell you some of the players who are actually in competition that didn't get selected, who we could have chosen, right? Yeah. You would have less than Paul, you would have Mikel Williams, you would have Jamal Williams, um, Noah Powder, mm -hmm. Shannon Gomez, Keston Julian. So not I'm not knocking the coaching decisions because that's his business. But yeah. if you pick players who are not in season ahead of players who are in season, can you then turn around and say, well, you know, I didn't have Fit player, in, in yeah. Right? yeah, 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 and I think that would be um, a, a fair criticism because again, if you're looking at it objectively, um, you, you you're better to go with the players who are playing, right? Um, that was the case pretty much with the French Guyana team because people are making the point that that team they didn't play games for eighteen months, but as a team, but the players who represented them. Are active players they're, they're playing you know um uh, regularly right for their respective clubs and so on um i know that he did reach out to some of the players who are in competition uh keston julian steam for example sheriff they played yesterday and won um four nil in their first um yeah. Champions League qualifier. qualifier right yeah. so 
there were players who he reached out to who he was who, who he wasn't able to get right um the the, the exact so list as replacements or in the first bunch in the first the yeah in, in the first in the first bunch right in the first drawdown right there were players who he reached out to who um were not able to make it because um, of their club commitments, right? So he, he didn't push too hard against that. Um, and that would account for, obviously, some of those. I don't know um, exactly how much, but I know that Bato was the case and, with quite a few. Bato yeah. and Levi would have, would have also been um, amongst those who were yes, not available. Those. Because of correct. Club it's the thing, because he, he only he told us that he couldn't get Bato and Levi, he wanted them. But yeah. then he said the others, he didn't want. So, I mean, if he had explained, you know, like you saying, we are reasonable people, you know, at yeah. Wired, we will say yeah. that. I, I, am, I am not at Wired and I'm very reasonable. I just want to put that in. Thank you. I think okay. you, you also have to consider is, is still the players that he might be comfortable with as well, mm -hmm. you know. Correct. So, so much as, point. as much as, you know, they are fit players, and I think that you should take your fit players, especially in a tournament like this, but he had how much? Ten days? If so much, two weeks? Yeah, less than that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. Of we can look at it a bunch of different ways. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah, the okay. sessions, the in terms of sessions, it, it, it was like six sessions. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so I mean that as well helps to provide some context to what we're seeing uh on the field, Lasana. So I think the, 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 those are considerations that um, you know, people should take on board when, when they're assessing actually where the team is at. Well, let me ask um, Johansi. Now, Johansi Marshall, um, former Toronto Bay International, and of course, you, you distinguish yourself with, with Stephen Hart's team, which is a team that got the two CONCACAF quarterfinals. What was Hart's balance? Because I know with his team, they would always have some players, according to which part of the world they're playing in, some men off season in let me say January to March or something, so people off season in the summer months and that kind of thing. Did, did you ever notice in terms of hard selection how he would try to find a balance between who was played and who wasn't playing? Or did it not um, matter? I don't think that mattered as much. I think it's more about the players that understood their role and their function, right? Um, there were definitely players that was left out of, of his teams that was in season, that was doing good. Uh, case in point, Julius, um, you know, I think he won the, the USL championship at the time, but I think it's, it's about cohesion um, and, and players that understood there was a balance between the, the, the experienced players and the youth, you know, and the players that understood that, yo, we are here to represent Egos have to stay by the door or stay before you reach the team, and everybody have a job to do. Not every, not everybody is gonna start, but everybody have a part to play, and that's from the eleven, the eighteen, and the twenty-three man squad. So, mm -hmm. I think the team understood that. Mm -hmm. No, now the team just haven't um, gotten past French Guyana in Florida. They then had to take a flight across the Dallas for the for the next game on Saturday. You could explain to people listening the challenges for players in terms of flying around because they do have a lot in the Gold Cup, right? One yeah. game in this state and next game yeah. in another state. Talk about the yeah. different off the field challenges we don't see and, and how you all address those. So some some places is just the travel. So some flights according to what state it's in, it could be a three, four hour flight, and then you might have a bus ride to, to go another two hours, right? Um, just that adjustment, the, the times that you have in between games. Uh, so how it usually works with the Gold Cup is as soon as you play a game, I think the night of or the night, the night of the game or the morning after, you fly one time. And when you fly, you have a training session that same day, you know? So it's, it's, it's not like you play and then you get a rest and then, no, it's 
constant movement because one game could be in Florida, the next game could be in LA, the next game could be in New York, and all those things are different um, time zones as well. So a lot of things are factored in when it when it when it comes to, to the games and the travel. So the, so the little the little bar line they had afterwards. Then you you all never do that on the heart is what you're saying then. I think that little bar line is an expression of just being happy to qualify. <laughs> being um, be relieved. Um, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I wouldn't expect or I shouldn't expect that there were any alcoholic beverages consumed unless it was by the coaching staff. Right? Especially as you have a game a week away against the powerhouse well, of CONCACAF. I think it was four days away. Four days, four days, yeah. Right? So yeah. I don't think there was any alcoholic beverages, but I think there were uh, a couple of youth teams there, uh, youth players, and they interacted with some of the fans. So um, just to get the fans to come out to watch the team, I think is a big accomplishment. Yeah. And just to interact with them, I think is 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 not a problem. I don't think it's a problem once there's no alcohol involved because there's a quick turnover. You're going to leave the same night or the next morning mm. to train. You, you have some injuries on your hands and you're already on an upward battle. Yeah. So <laughs> I think um, to me, don't watch at it too, too critical. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're yeah. Your to the last yeah. 15 minutes of the game. <laughs> yeah. 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 The yeah. results. Yeah. 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 never kick a lime, you know, you answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You must remember that you answer never kick a lime. <laughs> right? Um, oh, I need the, the CMO. The, just pointing out. Yes, of course. Give me the CMO, the CMO of you now. <laughs> um, uh, hopefully not super spreader in, in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think I think they were safe because um, if you look at the video, other than the, the staff were there, the people who were there were really the Trinidad and Tobago lawn tennis team, the junior team, and the the um, where, where it is they going into Davis Cup or whatever the 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 senior team that were there in 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 Florida um, preparing for their for their their competition and they came out to support. So um, once that line the next ten. Uh, once that line didn't turn into a real trainee line, <laughs> which, which, you know, we have no limits now. Once it didn't extend into that, and I don't see any reason why the, the, the persons who were there would allow it, because we have Angus, who's not just only, uh, you, you, don't, you don't just look at him as a new coach, but he's a man who's played in a numerous amount of tournaments and knows mm. where's the drill. You have mm. Richard mm. Piper, who has accompanied teams for a number of years. These fellas have the experience of what is needed as opposed to what preceded this team in terms of management. And COVID, I know. Inexperienced management team. Well, it's a different but, challenge now eh, in, in being in COVID time, you know? Like yes, yes. I, I, I appreciate that, but I also have a certain level. Me, for taking off my culinary hat. <laughs> I just put... <laughs> <laughs> and, and also my coaching hat and just being a fan and an observer and a spectator I have a lot more confidence in the back rooms in, in Richard Piper being there let me say this in Richard Piper being there I have a lot more confidence in what will happen behind the scenes in terms of logistics and management as opposed to the, the person who held that position really? before you might as well call him name and call him out already. Say Asian Roman and done. I know, you see, I, I don't know who is that person. <laughs> so <laughs> that, the manager. No, no, no. Well, the, whoever held the managerial position before, because as far as I know, it was Basil Williams was supposed to be the manager. And then so I did, I'm not getting into that. But whoever held the position before was not as experienced as Piper. And and with with all of these things, as your answer pointed out, traveling, this, this is not just we go to Bermuda and we play a game and then we leave there. This is a tournament and we have to go here, there, everywhere. I have a lot more confidence. So I'm saying all of this to say that that 
um, that line, that, that, that event that took place there that, that we, we got a glimpse of, I think, I think it would have been properly managed and um, it should not negatively affect anything that, that happens going forward. And I wouldn't expect that it wouldn't be, that was just, they having after game dinner and, and the fans was there, so. Yeah, yeah. One, other thing, I want to point, one other thing I want to point out that people may not understand. That was a, that was a restaurant where I am sure they would have made a booking before to yeah. get um, to, to get their meal. That meal is part of the recovery. You know? They have played. They need to get yeah. they need to get protein and energy back into their systems to begin the recovery process. So that was necessary. What what it turned out into, because you know we're Trinidadians, so Trinidadians who went to watch the game would to find a way there, right? It turned into an impromptu celebration. Yeah. But as I said, I'm, I'm confident. That that didn't turn that didn't turn into uh, I don't know the bottle and spoon. It was very professional, is what I say. Well, <laughs> the, the, the bottle and spoon is weak, right? That's weak. That, that okay. Once the bottle and spoon didn't turn into a road a, a road procession and a and a and a, a jog around the car park, that's it. That, that's all well, cool. And I'm sure I'm confident yeah, in the yeah, staff. Yeah. I'm confident in the places there that it didn't get into that. Yeah. Yeah. But so, just some just some context before we move on from the the um, impromptu oh, Trini line. <laughs> give it, give it the sauce there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are much, um, but is the, the the culinary guy, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> so, no, 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 that that's Barney. Barney, Barney. Barney knows that's not about culinary, no lines. Yeah. Man, it's a toaster, it's a toaster oven, man. <laughs> let, us not leave, let us not deal with the appliance. It's a man can only do what a man can do with what he has. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's a good point to, to flow into the context that I was giving. We need to remember that um, the celebration was warranted because um, I know we are looking through the lens of... Trinidad and Tobago as a team that would normally qualify for the Gold Cup competitions, right? Just In reality, yeah. exactly, exactly, right? Um, but that's not the case. And I think we need oftentimes to, you know, refresh ourselves with that dose of reality that Correct. says Correct. Trinidad and Tobago players. Now, apart from the players, and again, um, Lassana, you made the point that it's the coach who selected them. But these are players who all, many of them are without, um, you know, some solid match practice. You had Molino, who was uh, one of the standouts for us in the first two games. He himself is recovering from, um, uh, for, from an injury, mm -hmm. right? So when you look through what is behind the, the, the performance or lack thereof, you, you have to consider where we're coming from, right? We are coming from a place where the, the, the rest of the Caribbean countries um, normally would come from, aspiring to get into a Gold Cup group phase. And that's, that, that's where we are. We, and we have to accept that, right? What we do going forward is important. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, sir. Yeah. <laughs> no, we needed that. We do. We did. We needed that. I, I, I listened to some of the comments and so on. And Unreal. Again, there Unreal. Is nothing, yeah. There is nothing in our recent um, results. And I'm not just talking under the previous coach. I'm talking, you, you have to go back a long way. When we scored that six goal against uh, Montserrat, Lasana, outside of the Anguilla game, when last did we score six goals against anybody? Right? I mean, that is the, that is, what do you have to really look at? Jeff, Jeff, why, why are you pointing to six? When last we scored three or four goals against anybody, we, we have to go back. You, right now, you see, the last time we were, we were in a successful, using that loosely, camp, work, um, World Cup campaign, was when your hands and they were playing. And, mm -hmm. and people, we, we need to, uh, just building on your point, 
I think um, we're not realistic. I was in a conversation with some, some schoolmates um, yesterday or the day before, and one guy um, um, who lives in the US, um, his athletic director there, played football and everything. He is saying that he is, he was shocked that we were celebrating that we beat French guy on penalties. And I, I had to ask him why he was shocked. He's saying that we, we supposed to be beating these, these teams. I want to know why do people feel we need to be, we, we supposed to be running over these teams when these teams, all teams have, have invested and spent time trying to get their football from wherever it was to a mm -hmm. higher place. And we have done nothing. As a matter of fact, we have, we're doing the opposite. So people yeah, going up and we on our downside and we now trying to arrest that. But Barney, 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 Barney. when you talk about teams um, who are who, uh, working with programs and so now we not, I mean, Puerto Rico literally had trials for their teams. Two weeks before. Before their game. That country has no program. And French Guyana as well. I mean, mm -hmm. seven of their players, 30 and over. Some of them players could play now over 45 easy. And nah, 30, 30 and over don't matter in, in modern yeah, times if you're, taking, if you're taking care of yourself. Right. Uh, yes. let, us not, let us not base this on your athletic prowess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> let us nah, not base this on that. At our 26, yes. I was done. Our 26. <laughs> um, reports coming in to me from one Miss Luan said that at 23, I was done. She just <laughs> get us. I go take she, tried to yeah. she tried to revive yeah. our old engine. She tried nah, to revive she our old engine. Yeah, she's 26. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but, but, but seriously, seriously, though, um, I hear you with the Puerto Rico game, and there, you see, that goes into other elements of the thing. That's a, that's a one-off. That goes into other elements of the thing. The Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. That I'm not going to touch on here. I'm not no, going no, to touch understand on... understand the relief, you know. The, re the relief, yeah. but like Johan say, as a, as a national player yourself, you, you didn't raise an eyebrow a little bit there, considering, because we're supposed to be there. The last time Trinidad played Mexico, you were on the field, you scored the big goal, Johan say. That is yeah, but, right but, now. but that was a different time. That was a different time. It yeah. had different players. It had different personas in, 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 within the national team. You had leadership. You had youth. You had a balance. I, I don't yeah. see that full balance where the elder players will put the younger players in check and have them in line for what they need to do going further. Correct. You know, and yeah, obviously, when, obviously, when I saw it first, the first impression was like celebration. But then, when as soon as I watch a little, I watch it again. I was like, you know what? As Sheppy said, you haven't seen any positive results yeah. in quite a while, and you have actually qualified for the biggest tournament in our region outside of the World Cup. Yeah. What other tournament do we vie for? And we have just qualified for it. There's a the, the, the difference is there's a short turnaround now. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, I, I will say that I will say that because your first impression, and then afterwards you understand it. You see, because still, I mean, it's, it's, no, but that is the dose of reality. It's take a yeah, while yeah. to go in because we are Trinidadians. Yeah. We are a small country. We had. Imagine that 1.3 million people. We had Miss Universe, we had Miss World, and we big for we close because we think we're supposed to be there every time. When the results show something completely different, you know, and 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 that's actually where we are. I looked at the boys um, in the second half of that French Guyana game, and I was sorry for them guys, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I look at the, I'm looking at the the. the the comments, you know, like these guys not fighting, you know. And I'm saying to myself, these guys have never been on a team on try to play. <laughs> and then fighting for the life, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just wanna, imagine I, players coming on, players coming yeah. on into that environment. Yeah. yeah. I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing here. Two things actually, but one is serious. Um, 
<laughs> the guy so, yeah, came out to that. The, nah, it, it had to be two. There's this show. How many people take the show here? So, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out. I'm reaching out to our total market and viewership. Then we don't go into why we can't get a sponsor now. You don't want me to tell everybody on, on, on you know, tell people about you. Right? But um the 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 guy who came out of that game. With the, with the greatest enhancement to the reputation was one of the guys who was most bashed, <laughs> abused, bashed. <laughs> yeah, bashed to the whole thing. And that yeah. is Hackshaw. Hackshaw yeah. was like a monster in that game, a, a, a giant in that game, right? There's the same Hackshaw who everybody say was a fat man and unfit, <laughs> right? So he, got, he went from a fat man and unfit to Superman. Trinidad yeah. not real. We yeah. not real. The second thing, and, and of least importance, is that it is it is it is telling to to, to know that um Jefferson George, a past national former national player, a coach of of a coach who I respect, especially in his approach to the, the game, points out that Trinidad and Tobago successes for a country of 1.3 million is Miss Universe and Miss World when we win. Olympic gold medals and things. Somebody needs to see where Jeff focuses. This whole thing. Jeff, you need to get back on track. We need to sport. I said if you can get back on track, I love it. Yeah, you understand? Jeff, get back on track. Jeff, keep your focus on sports. I'll take it from you. I'll take it from you. I'll take it from you. I don't know the best word I said. <laughs> what the, I, 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 my, uh, no, I my look, internet I look for the man feed. I look for the man feed. I look for the man feed to get cut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> come Jeff, come Jeff. No, the point, okay, let, the, the point I'm making is not just in sport, because a lot of the people who, good a lot of the people, no, let, let me help me, let, let me help you, Good comeback, sir. Good comeback, sir. A no, lot of the people. Help yourself, Jeff. Help yourself. <laughs> I stand on my, I stand on my statement, you know, I stand on his statement. A lot of the people, you know, they, they're watching sports, and for them, this is entertainment. Right, that is they they they, they watch um, the games, and for them they're looking to see they, they want to be entertained. Now the hard thing about it is when your heart is in something and you're looking for entertainment and you don't get you just get heart broken, you know. Mm -hmm. And and, mm -hmm. and Trinidad fans, to be honest, have been abused for the last you know six seven years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's been unrelented for them. So I mean. The, the, the relief, you know, by some, and again, some looked at it and saw, and thought to themselves, like Johan say, the, the, the first time, why are we celebrating this? And the answer to that is simple, because we have done it in a little while, right? In the last few years, what would have happened was that offside call that they uh, that they got from um, French Guyana, that would yeah. have been that took us out and we'd have been said, boy, you know, we got knocked out to French Guyana, you know. So sometimes you do need, you know, that little uh, kick, to put it that way, to get things rolling in, in the right direction. And who knows, this might be it. Although they might have a simpler reason, eh? State of emergency in Trinidad, fellas can't take a drink, no way. Eh? <laughs> 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 Well, well, it's a good thing they can't take a drink away because with that, boy, boy, we have real problems. <laughs> People barely holding on to logic while sober. <laughs> People barely holding on to logic while sober. Before I go to, to your answer, Jeff, let me challenge you. You call some some famous um, people off the field, beauty and so on. You call the famous sportsmen. Call some famous administrators and, and, and politicians we export now. We, we. <laughs> we, know, we know York, we know Lara, we know Penny, uh, we know Atto Bolden. Give us some administrators we export now. Administrators? Wow. Williams and them fellas? Who? The man said that we export, you know, boy. Eric Williams. Eric Williams. 
Yeah, you know, I, we, you, you, you understand scratching my head now. If you, you have know? a bad time, we, we know where the problem is then. That's a kind of man. Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture. Mm-hmm. Black and white TV going back for administrator. But, <laughs> Listen, but, 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 but what, always a loaded question, the point is taken. And and I have harped on it for the longest while. And, and it's something that extends across the Caribbean. Eh? It's not just a Trinidad problem, but okay. it, is, it, is, it is apparently um, con concentrated and magnified in Trinidad. Administrators and administration and the understanding of what is required is poor. It is poor. Mm -hmm. People feel that they are doing the sport a favor that they are doing the athletes a favor, that they come first and then the athletes, the footballers, the, the cricketers, the, 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 the tennis. Well, let me not say tennis because tennis is the shining beacon right now in sports in Trinidad and Tobago in terms of administration. But, but, but the, the, the other sports, they tend to, to act in a manner as if they are the ones the people come to see, that the spectators come to see, that the world wants to see. You all are there, your purpose is there to support the athlete. That, and, and once we understand that and start to move to students, then administrators could then get a pat on the back because the athletes and the sport is doing well. We can't yeah. do that. We certainly can't do that with football in Trinidad and Tobago. Correct. Now, as, as you as this was my question, Lasana, um, I mean we we it, it's it's hard to find, but we do have um Quality administrators are wrong. Now they aren't think about sometimes it attached. Hard, you, think about so again? you think about it hard just now, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I don't think about it. But again, we need we need to encourage those who, who um, have done good work and right. who are doing good work. Right yeah. now, may, maybe what I am hopeful about is that we can attract into football. You know, some of the quality management I I did. Um, my sports degree at UTT, Miss Cabrales, is, is excellent. I think she's um, very knowledgeable, right? Mm -hmm. She knows uh, 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 stuff. Um, Mr. Ferguson, right? Norris Ferguson. Norris I don't Ferguson. Know, was excellent yeah. as well, right? Mr. Piper, who you mentioned, who is there, right? He, he's, he's been very, very, um, very steady, right? Very steady and efficient in terms of how he carries about his job. So, I mean, yeah. When we look at it, I mean, from politics come across, we do suffer from, you know, proper song leaders. But I think if, if we can attract some of these, you know, stars into, uh, to contribute towards um, the football and moving it forward, I think we would be in a much better place. Um, look, we have, we, 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 it's funny that you said that. Look, we have a, a gentleman who's just joined us here who, um, can fall in that category of, of administrators who could lead us in the right direction. Good evening, Mr. Um, Mary Gonzalez. Um, with that, with that, um, so you're talking to that, me that, first, that, you know, Barney. I didn't I had to click right on my Zoom to see Mary in the room, too. All right, <laughs> yeah, well, that's all right. Technology and you do always run, you know, a good race, right? <laughs> you get left behind, but Mr. Gonzalez, um, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Just listening to you guys having fun. All right, Mr. Gonzalez, any, any um, extended period of time sharing conversations with Lasana Lightbird is far from fun for me. <laughs> let, me assure, let me assure you of that. <laughs> hey, what, what do you see as uh, you, you, you knew in this position now as, as um, school president? You know, give me your ideas of, um, you know, what leadership should look like and what you hope to bring to the position essentially well first and foremost i want to thank you for the opportunity to be here coming off another zoom meeting but i'm feeling a bit left out man you know i'm looking for my beard everybody has seen me like well <laughs> all persons except no. corey i see corey but everybody's sporting their beard no worry it's only, it's only ball head i seen too ball head and beard. <laughs> <laughs> But on a more serious note, uh, concerning the administrative arm of sport in Trinidad and Tobago and in the region and even globally, it's an exceptionally and critically important aspect that we need to address. Let's come back home. 
And uh, over the years, as a matter of fact, just coming off a Zoom meeting with being part of the Organizational Development Committee of the Basketball, we were lamenting uh, the concerns that we have there concerning uh, the number of issues that are being addressed by breaching the very same constitution that they have before them as a guide. And I believe if we recognize that first and foremost, that we are supposed to be servants of the game and not the game serving us, as I believe Sheppy would have said, uh, that some of us come into the circle to see what they can get out of it rather than understanding at the end of it is really the players are the ones who are supposed to benefit from all of our efforts. I also agree with what Jefferson would have said that there are several very competent, knowledgeable and productive personnel within the arms of the administration doing quite a good job. As part of the SSFL being president, now it's not that I just automatically assume the president role because I've been serving in the administrative arm of the SSFL for almost 30 years, but at the zonal level. And I felt the need that I could maybe assume, not be, I, I believe that I could have assumed the position of presidency and make a further contribution at that level. What is very important is that we need to recognize that there are strengths and weaknesses in all of us. And some persons will bring to the table areas that we may not possess. And therefore it's about sometimes understanding, recognize, and as a people, we need to be a little more positive, even though in the, in the culture of fatigue and that we may have for each other and the negativity, uh, we need to be a little more positive in our outlook. And, and, and for example, the young fellas or the TNT team celebrating that they knew, they, they knew fully well where they are, where they're coming from. And while one may feel that why celebrate so much, it is a great achievement. As a matter of fact, they have, by that victory, they have lifted the spirits of the nation of Trinidad and Tobago a little more. Because if we had lost there, my goodness, it meant we are already at the bottom of the barrel. We mean we'll be digging now the bottom of the barrel to go even further. So it is, it is a reason to celebrate knowing fully that the real deal will come Saturday, playing Mexico, followed by El Salvador and then Curacao. Maria, but they have, Maria yeah. before we go into that, as you yeah. mentioned, Mexico and so on, because we'll be going to go into that next with you and yes. And yes. we're going to come back to you with some more of the administrative side and right. also what your impressions are um, or what your hope is from mm. for this goal cup which had. but as you mentioned the, the yes. mexico game coming up um mm. johan say are we in a position to, to dream right now in terms of the result uh, are we going out now essentially just to show we could compete or, or, or not get embarrassed what is our goal going to these three games here starting with mexico yeah i think it's just being able to give a good account for ourselves. We can't look over the, the stars right now. I think we just have to make sure that we, if, if the coach have a proper game plan, try to have some type of structure and give a good performance for ourselves. Mm. And, and that could, a good performance could come with a loss, could come with a draw, could come with a win, right? Um, so, with the players that we have there now is a much younger team. So, this team, if this is the team that you want to move forward, these are the games that you, you, you're going to have to try to pull whatever you could get from these games. So, I still, I still think there, I still think we, we shouldn't just look at what the scoreline going to be, but our performance because if we watch at the other two games, we might be able to pull out a result from those games. Mm -hmm. We need to be structured in this game, follow the game plan, have a proper structure, and if we're hitting them on the counter or whatever the game plan is, we have to have structure. 
if we don't have structure, everything will fall apart. And then it could happen like uh, the USA game when we get a bunch of goals. But we need to have structure. Once we have a, a good defensive block and everybody understand their role, I think once we doing that well, we can only build on that and get better. You, you think fitness-wise, I know we're trying to bring in, obviously, two or three, three players into the squad. You think that we're able, you think we have just enough legs to maybe hit them a low block and, 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 and something over the top, a smash and grab? Uh, and <laughs> before you even go into that as well, right? There's always this thing where they say Trinidad players, from the time they hear Spanish and they feel the knees, they start to shake a little bit, you know? I, 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 I don't... What about the Latin teams? Trouble us. They don't beat us all the time. But what, what is it about them? What is their strength that makes things a little difficult for us, you would say? They understand runs. They understand playing off the ball. We don't understand playing off the ball. They understand you can make a run into a position and you're not going to get the ball. They play blind passes into space so a man can run onto it. When I was in Mexico, what did... What the certain plays that we will learn is if it go out to the, 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 say the right back, the right back playing it into the right wing and the right wing hitting a, a blind pass, around a blind hook corner. pass around the corner, around the corner. into yeah. the striker, laying it off and he running on it. Mm. You're not even seeing where that man is, but he know I have to play that pass there. And that player know once it yeah. go into him, I have to get in a certain yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. They understand uh, they understand what they have to do and they understand space. We don't necessarily understand the space as yet. And this is, this is again, coming with the experience with other players that we would have around the, the, the world playing. But that experience not just going to happen like that. It had to come from games and it, it have to pass down from players who, who know. You know, so... Again, when, when we're coming up against the Spanish teams, obviously they're playing into space, but we're playing man to man. And that, you're always at a disadvantage right there. How, how, would, we adjust to, the how would we usually adjust to, to, to deal with that? Again, if you know your structure, once you have your structure, you understand your role. If you have a block of six or a block of eight, you playing your block. No matter what they, how they play, once you move together, once you step up together, once you drop together, once you fall in, you have that cover, you have that balance, I think we will be in a decent place. Everybody has to be on the same page. You're not going to have large periods of the game with the ball. You know? So you have to pick and choose your moments. You can't just chase mm -hmm. because you will, you already don't have a full gas tank. <laughs> so you have to pick and choose what you're going to do. And you have to choose, you have to play strong, you have to move together, you have to keep that block. And if you get an opportunity, take it. But if you lose that ball, get back in your structure and we start over again. You can't try to do too much when you don't have the legs right. against a well-oiled machine. That's Anna. I think you touched on something um, real important there in that. The, the Central American teams, they use the ball as bait. They use the ball to move you. Where, so, so they use the ball as a controller to, use the, to move the opponents into bad defending positions. So they're not necessarily trying to penetrate you one time. They want to move you, move you side to side, bring you forward, create that space behind you. And in so doing, there's two things that are going on there. One, they're going to penetrate you. If you, as your hands say, say, not in a well-oiled and well-cohesive block to, to defend, to shift, drop. If you're not like, if you're not moving as one unit, then you're going to be in trouble. But secondly, and, and this comes home to our present situation, that is going to kill your legs very soon. So they play, they play the long game. And you and I discussed that already. I mean, we, we talked that already. They play the long game there. So you break it down culturally then, essentially, right? So they're doing the, the, the tango and the spinning and pulling back the, 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 the date and so on. And we, we, we grinding, is what you're saying. We, 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 yeah, yeah. 
we we reach any dance. We reach any dance. And we, we want to grind one time. And they say, they say, now nah, we are whole night, baby. Watch this. Watch that. And, and, and that's the thing. That's the thing. We cannot. And and and, and again, into the technical part of the things. Uh, I'm staying away from that for now. But um, we, 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 we do have. We, as you answer pointed out, we 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 in a position where our legs are already compromised. Mm -hmm. And coming back to this, the the question about about um the performance, there there are things that we could take out of the game. Win, lose, or draw. There are positive things that we could take out of the game according to how it goes that we could move forward with. Um, I, I am not just watching the game based on whether it's a win or it's a loss or it's a draw. I'm uh, 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 looking at it, and I hope Trinidad and Tobago is, um, is mature enough to analyze, to analyze what is going on there. Because you, we will have, the thing about it is, we will have a marker to compare to it. Yeah. We have a marker to compare it to. We just played against it. We just played against USA. I'm not talking about the score. I'm talking about what we saw in that game. We didn't see the cohesion that we want. Let me see something different here, and and um, I can see something to build on. Mm. And but, you know, you, you answer, we can't compare to when we played Mexico in in uh, 2015, right? But you are going to do that, though. But, no. but you are going to do that, though. No, I'm not actually. <laughs> You're, you're Russian man. You're Russian man. You're trying to jam one time. Yeah. <laughs> not you. Not you. Trust me. Not you. <laughs> when you went to Buenos Aires, I would say, right? You were part of that team. We were playing against Argentina just before the World Cup in Second Buenos Aires. Messi on the field. And I, I, I'm pretty sure in the, the, the dressing room before you were not talking about how to win the match. So... What would that have been like then? You, you think that situation might be a little bit similar where you know boy today gonna be really, really tough, you know? Yeah, of course. Again, it will come back to the same thing. You have to understand your role and your function. And once we I think we were building on so much confidence we had at that time. The performance that we had, minus the result, if you don't look at the result, we had a really good game. Because we were moving the ball, you know, we, when we got our moments, we, we, we tried to take it. But again, we had, we had an understanding for each other. Um, and we know we were going to be without the ball for large periods of the game. This is when you call player for player on that team. This is, those were players playing at the highest level all around the world for top teams, you know? And we have players who are unattached, pro league, some MLS, some, I think one or two are still in Europe, you know? But man for man, is, is no con it, there's no contest. But as a block and as a team, we worked well. You saw that functionality moving from the right side to the left, the left side up. When a man have to press, the, we got the balance. And, and that's the thing. You could have a good game and you can learn from it without the result. Or, you know, not looking at just the result. Win, lose, or draw, you could have a good game. And that is what we had to look for. Once we stay focused on, on, on what we have to do defensively, I think we can learn from that into the other games and try to grind out a result there. Fair enough. And, and you already tell another story, right? You, you had Messi in your pocket. I know you're going <laughs> to... My, tell, my telling of this story, and I always tell people this, I could, I could safely say Messi didn't pass me in that game. <laughs> <laughs> I could safely say that. You know, I am one defender in the world that could say that Messi didn't pass me. <laughs> You know, in that game, I can see it, you know, and it was, it was one of, you know, one of the better performances of my career and who, what player, you, you, you measure yourself when you come up in those games, you measure yourself against the players that play at the highest level. The game and, and flashbacks to Latipedia, you know. 
Not much, not much people can say that to you, and say. Yeah, and this is what I'm saying. You know, I, this is these are the stories I could go back and I could tell my daughter and yeah. and, and my grandchild. You know, so these are the stories you could tell. Shappy, what you wanna say? What you wanna say? No, I I I I, I agree with your partner. I have a moment like that too, but it's not cricket. <laughs> it's not football. Sorry, I could <laughs> tell my grandchildren. Well, Cecilia and Anika, we have no grandchildren coming anytime soon. And I <laughs> we just get out there. But I could tell, I've, I've told my daughters and I could tell my friends and every, everything. I faced Ian Bishop for a number of times and he never out me. No, 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 no. We used to, we used to, we used to meet um, um, uh, Belmont in all the finals back in them days, uh, playing for Fatima. And he never out me. I lose some some underwear. Some underwear was never good after. <laughs> Again. But, but, but he never out me. So I, I know what you're, you're saying about that, Johansi. But getting back to the um, getting back to the thing, the parallel that Johansi drew there, and, and and thank you for Latana for for um for coaching our question. The parallel that 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 exists between that Trinidad versus Argentina. And this Trinidad versus Mexico is what Johansi said there. When you look at Mexico team, whichever team Mexico put on the park, player for player, that in terms of where they got... In those are in those fellas in this one. Right. Yeah. In terms of where these guys are playing, player for player, yeah. we're not, we not in the same up. ballpark. They can't line up. Exactly. But, and, and Johansi said it beautifully, but if we or if we are organized and operate like a cohesive block, then it is easy. It is easy for us, and easy is 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 relative. Right? It, mm -hmm. is, it, mm -hmm. it is easy for us to look at certain things, set certain expectations, and look at it after the game and check and say, yeah, yes, yes. Now we need to do this better and go forward. Go forward with that, despite the score. Go forward with that. Uh, and the last thing I'll say here, our team that is in this tournament, you ask, um, Lasana, you would know better than me. Um, I, I, might have, I might have to count it for you, but you will know better than me. <laughs> how, how many players have Gold Cup experience on this one? I, I, I show about maybe six or seven players. Out of a squad of, out of, a squad of 23. There yeah. are positive and, and, to take and, from and, and I think two of those players may be goalkeepers. Injured. Oh, keepers, two right. Two goalkeepers. Yeah. 100. Yeah. Right. And nobody started. Indeed, from the last game, you had Frender up, Jelani. Frender up in... Yeah, who yeah. hadn't played in a goal cup before. Yeah. That's three. Dura Garcia would have been four. If he still didn't call him. Russell, Russell. Yeah, call him. Uh -huh. Marcus would be another one. So, yeah, you're looking at about... Right. And coming out, and coming out of this Gold Cup, these fellas, they are supposed to be now moved to the next level in their career, because the players they would have played, the pressure they would have been under, the the atmosphere they would have been in, you, you as a player, and this is where the the staff has to drive this home too. What it means wearing the shirt, right? It's not just going out there and putting a hundred. But it is going out there, putting a hundred, and then the next time I go out there, I am a better player because mm -hmm. I know what it means. I know what is required now to play against the best in my region. My training sessions, my approach to training, my approach to preparing myself cannot be the same as it was before because I have gone into battle and realized, hey, I hear these fellas up here. I went and fight and make sure I survive. But next time I come, I have to be better prepared. So Trinidad and Tobago as a, whole, as a whole, our football, this is why it was so vital for us to qualify here. People, people thinking about the results and things, but for the football on a whole, for us to start to get the players who understand what it is to operate at that level and then come back to their club teams and pull up youngsters who are not training because now these fellas and them, they have to come back and walk like a footballer and operate like a footballer. When I say a footballer, I don't mean a man who could play football. I mean a man who lives by football. They I'm have to now sure. come and operate like that and force others in the clubs to step up to their level. 
And in so doing, in so doing, our football will start to go up. The technical aspect of it, the prep, the, 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 the mindset of it will, will, will start to go up there on that level and, and hopefully they drag everybody up. And that's why it was so vital for us to qualify. Yeah, I agree. Professionalism. Go ahead, um, Jeff. Uh, yeah, Lasana, the, the question you posed to um, Johansi, um, both Johansi and Shepard mentioned the technical aspects, but I'd like to get Johansi feedback on this as well. One of the key things with those uh, South American teams, right, uh, we have one in our group, uh, again, two in our group, um, El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica, right, uh, Panama, is apart from the technical abilities which they clearly do have, the game understanding, is a natural aggression, right? And that doesn't mean um, while. It means even the attacking players, when they're coming at you, they're coming at you with purpose. They'll come at you every single time with the hope of getting past you. And Sheppy mentioned something there that I think we need, as he's saying, to, if we are to continue to use this as a catalyst for you know, relaunching our football program. I think that is one of the biggest lessons we can learn from these um, Latin American teams because, I, again, they are never going to stop. They can be down in a game. And if you're looking at it without knowing the score, you wouldn't be able to tell who's down in that game, right? And that is one of the things I, I think, um, you know, all of them carry. They, they carry that, that passion, that drive, that aggression, um, Again, the performance is always important to them. And that passes down, eh? That, yeah. part, that is a culture now, eh? Correct. Mm -hmm. But that is in their culture. And it is not in our culture yet. Yeah. You, answer that you, know? you, you see some of these guys in the, in the pro league and, and, and the face crew and, and they, they want to they look like they want to break the referee that lash or some kind of thing. And they go outside there and some little 23-year-old fluffy little Guatemala had them quiet and on the toes and thing. You know, where, where the... Is, is a or is a, a locker? Is it self-esteem? Is it is this again leg? What what makes some of the players seem so timid? In other words, when when they go out at that level, it's a pass down. These players are only playing in 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 one environment, and when you go into a different environment, is you your level now have to raise. You know, you see something different, and if you don't adapt, you will fall behind. And if the same said player go into these situations and don't learn and take all what they have to take from, from those games, good or bad, and come back and still implement it, then you'll be in the same, you'll be in the same ship. So if you go there and you see what, what they're doing, and then you come back and continue to do what you've been doing, nothing will progress. You know, when you go and you see those things and you see how those players play and make the runs, you now have to take that and come back. But the question is how much of our players are really doing that when they go into that environment? How much of these players are still pull, uh, witnessing that and experiencing that and now pulling the younger players or pulling the older players to do same set thing? You know, I don't feel like we have a consistent flow and a consistent learning process. We, we would see it and we would say, yeah, boy, look how them, them, them Spanish and them running. And, and then that's it. We're not going and say, well, okay, they're running and they're doing this and it's working for them. To me, a logical player will say, okay, if this is working for them and they're running like this, let's start to implement that in our game. And, and, and we need that, you know, um, but we need that pass down. And yeah. we need more players now taking that process and taking what they see there and, and bringing it back to the club, as Sheppy said, bringing it back to the club and spreading that. Well, well Barney would remember one example of that, right? Which would have been Akeem Adams. Remember the anecdote you got from Anton Corning, Barney? You want to share mm -hmm. that? No. <laughs> I will share it. When he was, when he was, when he was overlapping all the time, he went to the 
I'm not sure which World Cup it would have been World Youth Cup, 2007-2009. And, and they played against, uh, when I was in Africa, I took us Ghana, they played. And instead of they, oh, they had a, a, a right back overlapping, killing him. Because he overlapped with many right ringer and he confused. He didn't know which one to go with. And he said, when he come back, Trinidad, he said, do the same thing. Because he remembered the pressure that full back for him on So he was doing that for naps. And, that, yeah, and, and to add to that, yeah. Sheppy, before, to add to that, when a player actually comes back and implements what he, he, he learns, the other, his team players is, will now try to bring him down. But what are you doing running so? Why are you running like that? So it is, it is so double-edged where you are trying to do better by yourself and, and, and help your team, but players do not want to come out of their comfort zone. And don't want to, don't want to flourish and 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 express themselves and and grow. And you you want to say this this is what I was going and add to it. So if the the player has a responsibility, but because we have not as a as a group, I mean players and coaches have, we are not being exposed to games against uh you know opponents as often as often enough you find that you find that we we all right let me let me take it from a player's point of view at first you're playing in the pro league here if you're a good player after a while you get a measure this league you get a measure the opponent you have an understanding of what could possibly come at you and you know that you can deal with that you get called up for trinidad you go to play against Mexico, and it is like somebody open a whole bottle of smell and salts and pour it down your nose. Because now things coming at you that, whoa, it's happening. You, as a good player, you might see it happening. You might understand what's happening. But it's happening so fast, you can't deal with it. You now need to move to the next level. That is the same for the coach, too. The coach also needs to move to that next level, also needs to be exposed to that. So it is, it is vital that we are exposed to international competition, be it at club level, at full international level, at youth level. There's a, there's a point that Shaka made, that Lasana made, that, that Latapi made when he was on the show. The, um, once again, Angus himself spoke about it. The amount of youth international games these fellas were exposed to before making a debut for Trinidad, that they already had a measure of the guy. There was no fear for Mexico in these guys because these guys play against Mexico from jump coming up. Now understand, Mexico is the top dog. We respect Mexico. But when we walk out on the field, we feel we could beat Mexico. We feel we could compete with Mexico. And, and Mexico in themselves understand this Trinidad and Tobago team, because if you ever spoke, if you ever talk to any Mexican, they always talk about Trinidad and Tobago in terms of our athleticism, our dribbling ability. They have that in their mind with us. So, so, and again, it is because we have made an impression playing against them all the time coming up. No, bring it to modern times. We have not been playing football from 2016 to now. Yeah. We have not. Our players have not been exposed. Our coaches have not been fully exposed, right? And you get into this rut in domestic football where, as our coach said, uh, I win everything here already. You understand? Yes, but what have you really won? And who have you measured yourself against? And we need, we, again, I bring it back to why qualifying for this Gold Cup. Yeah was so important because it now affords us to go against Mexico and we win, we draw, we lose. We see, we have a group of players now exposed to that. We, we go against El Salvador, we go against Curacao, we have players exposed to that. And now we what we need from here on in, it's not just about the players and the staff here. No. What we need here on in is a plan to build on this to maximize the benefits of this to take us forward. I, I, I just say that I should, I should just give credit to, to, to Junagasi, right? 
The reason I will do it is I remember Judah as a, as a talented player. Now, we speak about Dwight York played for Trinidad for the first time at 10 years old. Right. So, Dwight played for at 10 years old for Trinidad and Tobago, Shaka and, and Latipi and so on, maybe at 12, right? I remember Judah Garcia was with, with Latipi on the 17 team. Uh, in the end, he didn't make the final cut, right? Judah Garcia would have made his first international game at about 18 years old, right? And now he's 20. So, really, only two years past in his first international game. But you could at least you could see some of the development, and we really didn't help develop Judah the way we should have as a country. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have been waiting until he was 18 years to get his first taste of the thing. And John Paul Russell wasn't far different as well, eh? because John Paul went with uh, he was with Cooper's team, he traveled and so on, but he hadn't played games. He played maybe once or twice in the latter He only really got to play at an a 20 level, you know. So these guys starting off at, at 18, 19. When really and truly they should be starting about 14 and 15. Yeah, yeah. but the fact, pipe, we don't have that pipeline structure as yet. That we used to, yeah, you know. You know, where you have where you still take your 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 consistent players and and again we could watch at different countries around the world, the top teams, they don't just have one team. If it's a B a, a team and a B team. Because you don't know what player is going to um, flourish early and who will flourish late, you know. So we 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 still have we we have a limited pool and we're not trying to expand that pool, you know. And a, a wise fellow named Sheppy once wrote about that, but um, you know. You trying to plug the Barney's Bible. The, the, uh, keep talking. Uh, 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 talking. Smart guy wrote about that some some months ago. Yeah, and say why you stopped oh, but No, but it, it, if you look at it, and and again, we we still ha we have to look at at some of these countries to see what they are doing well and how we can implement it into our our mm -hmm. football. And I'll bring back the Iceland. I'll continue to bring back the Iceland because they are three hundred thousand mm. people but the amount of children that they have playing now is remarkable the amount of coaches that they have quali um have their proper qualifications now is remarkable mm -hmm. you know so again we have to we have to take some pages out of these people's books and see how we can implement it into our book if i may just share uh, an analogy there as yeah. most persons would know Qualified certified referee and reach at the highest level thank God for that and also an instructor. What I have discovered and, and, and just to attest to the remarks being made about getting that international, regional and international exposure. And there's a rippling effect. If the state of the football in the country is at a low level, it affects all the various the, the the stakeholder in particular like referees because it's based on a level of football now if the level of football is high it also has an effect on the level of the officiating uh, that being said it means that in Trinidad and Tobago that still apparently looks and views football as a leisure and not as a business this is what will happen in the context of having a uh, 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 spectatorship that is maybe just 200 300 and in 1994, in my first regional uh, tournament, under 17 tournament in El Salvador, I got a rude awakening with a 48,000 $48, spectators, sorry, in the stands. And not only were they just in the stands, but they were very vociferous, very vocal. They were throwing firecrackers around. And that in itself meant that you, you know, Put in a position you had no choice than to try and concentrate as much as possible now i am trying now to compare that to what i experienced in trinidad and tobago and nowhere is that comparison but certainly having gained that experience as an initial uh, uh uh initial uh part of my journey when i came back or returned i was able to share that with the other referees but it allowed me to also lift my level of officiating so much so that I remember as one of the instructors, what we would have done on many occasions, 
to ensure that there is a concentration level that is above a certain par for the referees is to be, create a lot of distraction and yet still they have to focus on decision-making activities on the field of play at any given time. If I could ask you a few questions, right? Yeah. Um, well, first I want to ask you what you think would be um, a good tournament for Trinidad in the context where we are now as a football nation, right? But um, building on that, I want to ask what a good tournament for Trinidad and Tobago does for the stakeholders, including SFL. For instance, um, uh, yeah, it might be that uh, a good tournament might lead to more interest of football fans and companies, which might mean football might get a sponsor or two, maybe. I'm not sure if it's linked in that way. You know, you could tell me as a, as a stakeholder what you see the ripple effects are of trying to be go, um, you know, performing credibly on the field. And that is why I would like to say, good question, I would like to say that those who are the view that is celebration, that victory against uh, French Guyana was of critical importance. It does magni a magnificent impact it has on the image as it is right now of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, what is important is this. Remember the younger footballers, as young as they are, those under 10, those under 15, even those under 18, they are looking at the senior team to set the pace, to set the example. Now, if the senior team continue, continue to find themselves losing, it will be a psychological impact on the younger players. So they, they now look up to the older ones, the senior ones, for some, some level of mentorship and, and proper example. Now, that being said, the corporate businesses, as we know, they also like to attach themselves, and you can't get them wrong, attach themselves to anything that is attractive, productive, meaningful, and positive. As a matter of fact, the more successful you are is the greater the contractual agreement would be. Now, that being said, I would admit, however, that as we are moving ahead, we have had several meetings thus far with those previous, or let me put it this way, those sponsors and partners who have been part of the SSFL over the years. As a matter of fact, as of yesterday, we had another meeting, another one with Sportsmax and Digicel as breaking the ice to see how feasible it is, providing that there's gonna be a season, and if there's gonna be a season, what type of season it is gonna be, so that they could still make an impact. Now also too, in the absence of not having an 11 aside, if the protocols of the health and safety situation and the curve doesn't flatten and the restriction rate remains high with the debt and the COVID-19 pandemic, we have some other plans in the absence of the on the field to possibly maybe have an, a skills challenge competition virtually online. And there are some sponsors who are already saying, do you have any contractual agreement from other sponsors for that event as yet? It is new. As a matter of fact, they're suggesting to us, why, in addition to have it virtually, you should also take into consideration to have it physically and practically on the field of play. So there lies another situation, another opportunity for the student athletes to be able to engage in a skills competition with a sponsor on board. Now, if we are given the opportunity to not be able to go on the field of play, but maybe to have the sanction and permission to be given by the relevant authorities to have something that is more condensed, let's say within the ambit of an inside or indoor football, then we could focus on maybe having a futsal tournament. Again, sponsors are asking, one or two of them, do we have any contractual agreement for support of this event as yet. So the sponsors are out there, but they are willing to attach themselves to anything that they will see that is feasible, productive, meaningful, and productive, where they can also get their pong of flesh while they are assisting as a sponsor, but more importantly, as a partner attaching itself to the SSFL. All right, okay. Well, Jeff, let me bring you, bring you in now, um, Jeff. Um, 
gentlemen, we really think proper now. Mexico, El Salvador, Curacao. What would you say is a, a, a fair outcome uh, out of those three games? What, what do we have to do for you to say, well, okay, we, we did we did, we did all right. Bottle and spoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, we need to plan properly, right? Um, I think that, for me, if I can see that um, Coach Angus implements a strategy for us to, to, to go out and execute right, an effective plan, I, I don't believe in taking the field if you, and if you don't have a strategy to overcome your opponent. Right. Um, again, the, the opponent in front of you is the only team you can play on that day. Right. And it's called that ex tempo. That is part of the culture, too, you know. <laughs> no, we have no, we have to, we have to be able to um, develop a strategy to overcome the team. Now, you, you, you would hear the phrase, though, bring a knife to a gunfight. But if a knife is what I have, then. <laughs> I don't want a gunfight. I have to encourage you into a fist fight. If I get you in a fist fight, then I have a, a, a palm with a knife, right? Um, meaning to say, there is no, there there is no hiding in the disparity between ourselves and Mexico. That does not mean though we are we sh we don't have a strategy to overcome them. Now, the, I would see it uh, as as having discipline to give up possession in some places because we also lack fitness so which means we, we, we can't get into um, being to chasing them because they will love that right they will be able to to wear us out and, and, and take the legs away from us um, you know maybe in 20 25 minutes and then the rest of the game will be theirs but if we can limit um, the, 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 the running that we have to do if we can um, play in, in a low block that allows us the opportunity to pick the moments where we want to, 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 to win the ball. Because playing against teams like Mexico, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to develop a strategy of winning the ball. A lot of times, uh, Caribbean teams wait for the team to make a bad pass or, or, or to give over possession. And against higher position, you can do that. You will get the ball when it ends up in the back of your net, right? You will get a chance to, to, to center it. And yeah. that's, no, that, that is, we need, and that's why I, I think um, Angus, I know he's, he's going to be working on that, but I'd like to see him put a plan out, not just to sit back and defend for 90 minutes, right? Some sort of strategy to, to help us to, to, to break and to exploit whatever spaces Mexico would leave when they, um, when we bring them into into our low block, right? Um, the, the other right, two games... A fight to do, eh, Jeff? <laughs> you trying to get me in a fist fight and you have a knife in your waist or the South Men Real Jeff? Yeah, but... right, no, right, so we had, that's how we had to play. All right. Other than Mexico, what do you think? El Salvador yeah. and Curse, do we play the same way or, or is there any opponent that we could try to dominate or, or that's not going to happen in this tournament? No, uh, and well, for me, I think it, it, it may be a blessing that Mexico comes first, right? Okay. Uh, in, in, in this game, uh, we, we are going to have a, a good test, expecting Mexico to win all their games. I think then we can go after, um, you know, El Salvador, maybe to, to, to get a result, a positive one, and then, um, you know, we, we, we'd be able to... Um, with some confidence there, go into the the, the um, Curacao game, you know, expecting to get something out of it. If two teams are going forward, that may be a, a decent strategy. You know, if Mexico beats everybody, we, we do a good showing there, make sure that we don't run ourselves out because that's the first game that we're playing. So we don't want to take all our legs away in the Mexico game Right, I, I think that's supposed to be probably our, 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 the game where we put the most planning into. Right, we, we, that should be our most disciplined game in terms of, as I said, being able to give up the ball in certain parts of the field, mm -hmm. and then the, 
El Salvador game, we look for a result in that one. The Curacao, they're going to be very tough. And again, with the last game of the group, um, at that moment, they may still have a chance of qualifying, so they're not going to be coming easy, right? And um, well, we see what they can do in the World Cup games that they play. They were very impressive, I thought. And um, Manny Big Player didn't come. That is um, Hasselbank. Listen, listen, you, 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 very move along, you know. Yeah. I never see that as my big player. Gosh, <laughs> yeah. really a big player, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but they're going to be good. They, 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 they're going to be good. That, that's one of the teams I think um, there's a lot of I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, mm-hmm. for real. What do you, what do you think, Manny? Um, I, I, going back to something Jeff said, me looking at the games. It's fight and you have a knife in the race, that one? No, not that, not that part of it. I am not. <laughs> I, 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 the, only I, the only knife I deal with Lasana is in, you know, with my culinary arts. That's, that's the only knife I deal with. I, I, I know nothing about what you speak about. <laughs> I, I'm the, actually, I've now seen a new site of Jeff there. Whenever we need any meetings, I need to put my chair a couple of places of course from him there. <laughs> But seriously, though, um, Jeff made a point there, and it's something that I've been saying, um, and, and he reminded me, so I'll, I'll bring it up. We going into that Mexico game, and too many times, Trinidadian, um, our outlook on the game, and it's not tr- just Trinidad, is how we see the game, is that we either go and we high press, or we sit back in our low block and wait for them to lose the ball. You can sit in a low block, you could sit in a mid, mid in, in a mid block, but you are setting traps. You have to have a, 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 a clear idea of where you want to win the ball, when you want to win the ball, and how you want to win the ball. There's no there's no luck thing. So for example, and we that's could, what we happened could, with us in 2015 and 16. Yeah. So we, we could sit on the mid on, on the halfway line or we could sit deeper and we could present the goal is in the middle of the field. The goal is the central lane in the field. We could decide, listen, as a block in a 4 for 2 or 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, or wherever is the formation, we are denying access through the middle of the field. But when the ball goes to the wide, so we die, deny your access here, we force it to our side. When it goes to our side, that is a trigger for us to press here there and win the ball. So we are we have a clear idea of how we want to win the ball. That's just one example. I'm not saying that that's what the coach could do. He's a man there, he knows his players, he knows the opponent, he's going to play against, he can set other traps. But I want to see us have an active defense. When I say active defense, it doesn't mean we're going to run all over the place, but we are waiting on the triggers to win the ball where we want to win it, when we want to win it, and how we want to win it. So that's why I want to see out in the Mexico game. The El Salvador game, El Salvador, uh, this El Salvador team, I, I've seen a couple of the games. I don't think there's one of El Salvador's best teams at all. I, I don't think so. That said. You never really had a best to start with. But go ahead. Correct. El Salvador hasn't been at the top of the pile. But again, they have the same Central American philosophy of play. They the same things that 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 um Johansi pointed out with Mexico. With that part, that's standard for, for, for Central and South American teams. That part from a central access to a wide player who then plays it around the corner for, for, for the number nine, who is going to be there, dropping it for the number 10. For that same white player who played the initial pass to go on the run to get back, that, that, that is that's standard. So I expect to see the same things from El Salvador. But I really believe coming out of the Mexico game, having put together a decent performance, El Salvador is a team that we could look to try to go after. Again, let us let us put this in the context of where we are in terms of our physicality, in terms of our, our readiness. Preparedness. We yes, our preparedness. We are not at the we are not at the fitness level that we're supposed to be to be taking part in these tournaments. And that is not a result of, of the players pick now alone. It has to deal with also what went before. So I believe the El Salvador game, again, we can't go toe-to-toe. We cannot. 
but we have we can pick we will have more moments to hurt them i believe than we will have against mexico and 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 we need to use those moments um you see like how we started off against um after we scored the goal against montserrat and even how we started off against french guyana where we we were bright and we were positive and we were playing those balls from the defense into midfield I'll, I'll go back to a pass that i saw that hapshaw made uh, I told you that Hapshaw made against French Guyana is one of the best passes I see. Broke two lines with a pass on the floor from a, 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 a position, almost of a stopper position. Broke the lines with a pass to foot of a player to Molly, you know, or someone of the attacking players. I want to see us do that against El Salvador. So that's that game. And then we go into the Curacao game. And according to what is the situation that will dictate how that game is approached, Curacao has um, a storied coach sitting on the on, 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 on the bench. So obviously they will have a I see heading yeah. changing name all over the place for walks. So I don't know, is, is it heading uh, on the bench or private? I don't know, but uh, let, let's say let's say heading isn't let's say heading isn't there. I believe I don't think he, he would leave after the World Cup campaign where, where it's still successful. But let's say he's not there for that game, they will still play along those lines, right? So they will have a plan. We that that is a game, again, it is an opponent that that we should be able to compete with. But again, we have to understand against the backdrop of where we are now, how 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 much of a total to we can go, and we may really have to employ just technique of inviting you into the fight that we want right <laughs> but um that, that basically if i could if i could come out of the games seeing those clear pictures seeing those clear pictures from from you know in terms of what we want to do and i i am a happy camper you're talking now about being mature and realistic and thing right but we know when the whistle blow after about 20 minutes what the fans want to see right but if you really, if you think about it, now the Trini fans, generally speaking, they don't even back, they would not even back our, our, our West Ham or or our Bright, you know. They want the actually, back actually, there, there, there is a guy who backs West Ham that that I know of. But he's, he's not that intelligent. He's not that intelligent. <laughs> but he, he backs West Ham. He play for them. He play for them, right? No, no, no. He he, he didn't. Oh, okay. He play, he claim. Claims with a false British accent that he is from there. He's not as intelligent, and his choice of team shows, you know. But go on, go on. I, yeah. I, I, I digress. I digress. But the point is, the back, the one, the prettiest, shiniest team is their team. And as soon as the pretty, shiny team stop flogging sides, they go on to jump on our next horse, right? Because for, I read the children art fans, it's all about entertainment. And that is it. When you go to a football game across, across there, right? I was in England for, for a little while. And you can barely even hear the opening whistle, but for sure it's a, it's a roar because, you know, we out here and it's war. We're going to war against whoever we're playing against today. And in Trinidad, we come back here, the whistle song, and they hear nothing. Because really the Trinidad fans only get engaged when something happens. A man get dribbled or the ball reach close to the When next a man point. get beat, brother. When yeah. a man get beat. <laughs> we don't have supporters. We have people waiting to be entertained. Yeah. That, 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 that's us. So that, that, that has always been us. So when you're talking about dig deep, dig deep against Mexico and thing, them after a while uh, again. Yeah, they yeah. bought it. I, I don't know. Um, you answer you. You are up. You work with with um, Rene Simonis. No, I didn't. I didn't he, get to. He used to talk about that, right? And, and that is the, the the thing that. The, the fans, they're not a part of the game. They, mm. they, they come for that. Show me something oh. good, or I ready to go home. Yeah. Or I, you know that kind of way. And if I may add, if I may add something there based on the spectatorship, right? Uh, well, we, we we have historically developed this as part of the culture of being quite laid back, relaxed, and uh, ever so often wish to be entertaining or accept entertainment. So some, it, it, there's a rippling effect within even on the, into the sport where even the build-up of a game initially, rather than start aggressively, 
is that you want to start off quite laid back and sometimes some of the goals are scored on Trent Tobago within the first few minutes of either halves. So that is something that we need, really need to address concerning becoming more supportive and understanding the roles of the players there. As a matter of fact, a true supporter will really be recognized not when you are up, but when you are down. That is the commitment, loyalty, and cause our real genuine supporter. And we need to have that paradigm shift in Trinidad and Tobago's culture of the support, the support fan base. Well, Barney, what do you think? We had a market Trinidad and Tobago as um, Juve, a Juve team or something, Marshall Montano FC. You ever see an Iowa George crowd in our yes, now, what, I, what I wanted to say, back to your original point about Trinidad fan and coming to be entertained, and um, as it relates to that game, in terms of maturity, uh, I think you were saying that based on, uh, as a, as a uh, juxtaposition with the points that myself and Jeff had made, right? Um, what I will say is this, it's a good thing that, that these first games that Angus is going into are not nation league games, for example, which may have been played at home. Where that, what you brought up there about about the Trinidad, the average Trinidad fan, which I, I totally agree with. We don't have that level of maturity. And I'll go so far as we as a nation don't have that level of, of game intelligence to understand that, that it is not about always about walking out on the field and dominating our next team and, and, and being entertaining and being, being bright. Sometimes you have to play a different game to win. We, Angus is sporting it in that sense that these games are a way where we can't rely on fan support. We're going into the game knowing that we have no fan support, really and truly. Yes, there will be the Patriots, as your answer has, has pointed out, who have traveled from different corners of the states. But that first game, for example, is being played in Mexico. <laughs> yes, yeah, all they're going to tell me is, is, is in Texas, but that's Mexico. No, that is for sure. The Azteca, that is Mex that that come like the game played in the Azteca, right? Mm -hmm. so, political again, all right, partners. What's that? I say go on political already in the Republic of China. Go ahead. Hold on, now, brother. I deal with Mexico, Trinidad. <laughs> And fans, don't, don't do me that, please. I, I want to be able to travel back and forth from here. Do not do me that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we won't have, we won't have the, 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 the support and we won't be expecting the support. So that in itself does not, it, it saves the team from coming out into the, the Hazy Crawford Stadium and one, seeing an empty stadium or two, even if they are fans, not having them as a 12th man, as has happened on a number of occasions when people used to go to watch football in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So um, that, whilst I agree with you with the point about the fan maturity and that kind of thing, that's not a factor in this tournament. We will sit down on, on, on that site, that, that, that local site that has that some people is going write and people is going to up comments. We're not calling no names here. Oh, that's um, not a local game, yeah. People, people may go there and comment and, and, and be positive and be negative and whatever about the team's performance, but that's not going to affect the team. That's not going to affect the team, and that's a good thing in, in, in this tournament. Um, when, when we start to have games back in Trinidad, whenever that is, I would hope by that time, for our sake, that this team has built some sort of momentum, be it, even if it is not in a string of victories, but it is in a string of performances that show people, hey, you know what? If we get behind this team now, we could carry, we could help them. If 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 they losing two one or drawing one one, we could be that push and help them to win two one, to, to to come back and draw again. And I'm hoping that the performances that they put put down here in the next couple of games allows Trinidad to get behind the team. Uh, just before we move on there. <laughs> because you know, it's important to understand. I think sometimes we ask too much, or we expect too much of Trinidad. Um, Mr. Gonzalez made the point about can make a, a difference in terms of typical and how they support. So you make a, a slight distinction there. 
but that's who we that's who we are right Johansi mentioned the, the passion that these uh, Mexican fans when you go Costa Rica right you go Guatemala and how how intense it is on the flip side of that these same fans will turn against the players if they do right and, yeah. and some of the local fans you, you all may not see that right the first place I saw the, the canopy that blew out to, to um, shepherd the players out on the field was in, in um, Colombia, you know, in a, in a local club game, right? Club America playing national. And that, it was it was literally crazy. Millionarios, sorry. And that, when you look at the, when the stadium, when the game is finished, they have to leave the local fans and allow the foreign fans to go half an hour after then. Because it's fight outside, you know. They, they they really when they support the team, they know that they did their part. But Jeff, the you never go a soccer man up when I was George come out for the crown and he had about five thousand people from, from point fourteen. No, when no, no. Like, let's get let's get grimy, you know. Let's get grimy, you know. That's what, that, that what we are about. That is the only time we get grimy. The only time. The only time. The only I was fans, eh? I never found this like I was one boy. No, 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 no. Marshall are fans, but Marshall fans will push it, kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I heal, I heal fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but if, 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 if I, I want fans and life in the way, so I'll ask him if it's like that. George is a, Jeff is a, I want fans, you know. <laughs> Jeff is a, they want to bottle of water. What are you doing? I'm family, I'm family. Yeah. You see what I mean? You see? <laughs> Okay. Any any closing word on, on, on the goal gap? So we established that we 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 looking to compete really. Uh, I suppose we're looking to see uh there is an in, intelligent play from a tactical standpoint and so on. I, I suppose it is starting point right now for Fortunada and the Angus. Yeah. <laughs> I think what we what we're looking for is um is a structure. Once we see some sort of structure where we can build Moving forward, I think I think we can be happy with that. Um, if we don't see that structure, because obviously this game is going to be, if we don't have it, it could be it could go downhill real fast, right? And we also have to watch the goal difference. Goal difference is going mm -hmm. to be extremely important yeah. in this tournament, correct? Right. So we have to we have to have some sort of structure and. Especially in this first game, minimize goals and opportunities from them. Um, see what results we could probably grind out in the other two games. But um, yeah, just have that shock in in that first game and 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 build from there. And and for the players who have never seen a, a support base like what they're going to see on Saturday, what do you? <laughs> What do you tell them? What, what would you tell them, Johan, say, if you were in the dressing room? Um, you had a blanket out. Taking the experience, huh? You had to take in this experience because it's going to be something that most of these players have never experienced before. Some of them have never played in front of 5,000 people. And this stadium, I'm sure, is going to have at least 50,000 people and 50,000 boisterous people, you know? that understand the game. So when a play is about to happen, they are screaming and they are yelling and they are constantly involved, you know? So you can easily be distracted by that. But again, once, we, once you stay focused, take it in, stay focused on the game and, and, and make, make the most of the opportunity if you get an opportunity. If you make a bad touch in front of a crowd like that, is it hard to come back from that? <laughs> you um, if you didn't have it in your pocket, but for men who struggle. At all levels, you make mistakes. Other teams will, Messi will make mistakes at, 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 at that level as well. It's how quick you could turn over and forget that mistake and move forward. You know, you're always going to, every player is going to make a mistake. But again, it's how fast you can focus, how, how much and how much you could limit those mistakes because again at at that level one mistake will cost you 
will cost you at the international level. You can't make any mistakes. Professionally, you might get away with some mistakes. But at the international level, you will be punished by a mistake. So yeah. try to limit if you're not sure. Out. <laughs> Rosie. Out. You know, and, and start over, set your block again, and then you go from there. Thank you very much, uh, Jefferson George, uh, <laughs> Johansi Marshall, and Mirel Gonzalez for coming on and, and, and you know, giving the, our listeners and viewers some insight as we go into the tournament. Um, good luck to the Soko Warriors. Anything you have to add there? Not about VAR, um, money. No, just to say, just to say that um, these are three guys who who represented Trinidad and Tobago at the highest level in in the craft. Jeff and Johanse at national senior level and um, youth level, and and um, Mary at World Cups and and other to other tournaments. And just to say, you know, it, it's a pleasure, you know, chatting with you all and and thanks for your service. The game and the trainer and Tobago. We appreciate it. You're most welcome. Thank Thanks, you. man. Thanks. And also don't pick any fight with, with Jeff. <laughs> don't fight there at all, boy. <laughs> yes, and, and 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 please check Jeff's pockets <laughs> when, when you're going into any battle with <laughs> Anyway, everyone. Uh, thanks again. Um it was fun. And yeah, we go. God damn it! Oh, hey, bad boy. You know how we crazy. Hey, turn on all your radio, tell me what you hear. You hear the use of soca gun clear this year. Some people what we quit, but we just don't care. Cause I'm a devil of heart, like the other young girls. If it had no melody, I ain't no singing. Turn it off. And if it's violence, the youth and them did bring in. Turn it off. Hold it back because the way the people cling in. The band was gonna keep on singing. Cause it's only four amongst the stars. Now why did we carry it far? It's only war amongst the stars. They take the people too far. Well, so whether jump or whether wave.